everyone, it's Melanie here with Vintage Hill Studio. Today I am bringing you another repurposed project. I love these so much and it's using this vintage linen. I've done these before but I just love this little thing. So I'm using very simple supplies. They'll all be listed down in the description below this YouTube video. I've got a 5 by 7 inch card base. I've cut my linen down to roughly 5 by 7 and then I'll use this Elmer's Craft Bond. This is a spray adhesive. And then I have this leftover piece of linen, and I just love the lace or the tatting along the bottom. It looks a little bit like seashells. So I'll be using that in this project as well. And then this Hero Arts rubber stamp and the VersaFine brown ink. So first of all, let me just go through this with you very quickly. This is my spray box. I use this for overspray, for inks, other things like that. So I'm going to shake up my Elmer's Craft Bond very well, and then I'm going to liberally spray the back of my linen. And you can tell when it's wet because it will become kind of translucent. Now this is a temporary or a permanent bond. If you want temporary on something, you would just uh, spray and let it dry three to five minutes. But if you want a permanent bond, you spray it and join the services within 15 seconds. And I, of course, want a permanent bond for this card, so that's why I will be working to get this put on my card front as quickly as possible. Now, I can move and stretch this linen around just a bit to get it on the card front and trying to get a, uh, any wrinkles or bubbles out of there. You see you have a little bit of time to lift and move as you need to, but do try to work fairly quickly to get that permanent bond. I think this does a great job of a permanent adhesion to your card front, so that's why I like to use this spray bond. Now, if you have anything that's overlapping your card, that's fine. In fact, you want to cut your piece a little larger than your card front, because as you can see, it's easier to work with after it's been sprayed on. So then I'm going to just bring over my scissors and very quickly trim away any excess that you can see from your card edges. It sticks a little bit to my scissors because it is still wet, but that brayer does a good job of really pressing the linens down into the paper on your card. I did use a heavyweight cardstock for this card because I want it to have some sustenance here. Okay, and then on my computer, I just printed a few labels because I like to let the recipient know this is a vintage linen, as if you can't tell that. But I like to add this little label on the inside of my cards. And I've inked around the edges to make it look a little more aged to go with the overall theme here. And here is that extra piece of linen. I think this was a scrap from maybe a table runner or something. I'm not really sure. It's a little too large for a pillowcase. But I am going to give myself like a 5 inch width of this because I'm going to use this for the inside of my card. I don't know what made me think of this because I try to do something a little special on the inside of all of my cards, but I thought, why don't I just try to stamp on this linen and see how it comes out? Well, I was pleasantly surprised because if you have a nice rubber stamp, to me, those are the ones that stamp the best on linens. This will come out just fine. So I'm going to get this centered up here, bring over my VersaFine brown ink, and just get this stamped down very quickly onto that piece of linen. I like using this for the inside of my card because of course it perfectly coordinates with the outside. Even though it's not from the same linen as the girl, it still has the same look and feel, I guess you would say. So you See, that's going to go on the inside of my card, which is a nice finishing touch for this. I am so excited about this card, but you know I love to do repurposing projects anyway. So if you have any old linens or you come across any linens at a garage sale or whatever, um, see if you can repurpose them and stamp on them. See how it comes out for you. I think you would be pleasantly surprised as well. 
So I'm going to get that as close as possible, leaving some room for a sentiment there on the inside of my card. And then off screen, I went and sprayed the back of this with that same Elmer's Craft Bond. And I'm going to get that put down on the inside of my card. Again, working fairly quickly for the permanent adhesion. And I'll bring over my brayer again when I'm ready and really smush this into the card. Really get that adhesion going. Again, you can play with this for a limited amount of time and remove all of the wrinkles and bubbles and you'll be set. And then if you have any trimming to do, make sure that any excess is going off the edge where you can actually cut away. So you don't want to leave any excess where your card folds. If you have to err on the side of anything, go towards the edge there. Trim that away and the inside of your card is done. So this whole video was pretty much in real time. I edited out some things to make it go a little quicker, but really you can put this card together in less than 10 minutes for sure. And the only other thing I like to do is add a little embossing on the flap of my envelopes using an embossing folder in my Big Shot. And that finishes the card for this week. Hey, I'm so glad you popped over to join me. And I hope that you will come back and see me again next week. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. And happy crafting, everyone.